So today we're going to do Compton scattering. And um, once again, I'll um, try to do it more or less from uh, the definition of the scattering amplitude rather than just to use the Feynman rules. On the other hand, in the book, uh, Schwartz uses the rules. So you can see that um, he gets the right answer um, in this case. Um, all right, confidence scattering. All right, so it's gamma E minus goes to gamma E minus, and um, this uh, cross section is more complicated than the ones we already did, and the reason is that um, we've got the photon spin in the, the photon polarization vectors in the final state as well as the spinner ones, and so things don't don't quite don't simplify quite as much as in um, uh, e plus e minus goes to mu plus mu minus, or or uh, uh, e minus mu minus goes to e minus mu minus. So those were simpler. Now um, Compton originally found that delta lambda was 1 minus C over M. I'm going to use C and S for cosine and sine of theta, the scattering amplitude. Um, it saves a little bit of writing uh, later on, um, although I'm not going to use it at the, in the moment. But um, uh, so this is what this tells you is that the final photon is um, has a longer wavelength than the uh, initial photon. Of course, it loses energy to the electron. Now, um, J squared Thompson um, got uh, d sigma d c again. D co uh, I'm using d cosine is a uh, pi. Uh, R e squared 1 plus c squared. And um, R e is actually alpha over m. And uh, if you integrate, you get, so in other words, you, you write this as pi alpha squared over m squared uh, 1 plus c squared. You integrate, you get. Um, Sigma is a pi over three r e squared. Um, I don't know why Schwartz thinks that a pi over three is the same as two. It uh, is the same as one, but um, I don't know. I think he broke that section with his eyes closed. Um, let me get rid of this. So what do we have? We have I M S, and um, you see the way Schwartz writes the uh, Feynman diagrams. I'm going to write them a little bit differently, just because I think you should see the different ways of writing them. Um, Weinberg does this. And I think it's, um, I like it better because he has time going up. And then the horizontal line here is to indicate that this event could be before or after that event. Whereas, well, anyway. Okay, so IMT is going to be. Um, a, a different diagram. It's going to be again P2 in across out, and this is P3. But now 
P1 comes in here and P4 goes out there. So um, in this T-channel diagram, you know, writing it this way, you're not really saying that P4 came out before P1 went in. You said it might have gone out before, it might have gone out after, depending on whether the spur takes it later than that one time again going up. Um, so I think that's a nicer way of writing them. Um, anyway, what we're talking about is that S is um, some P3, P4 time ordered product, e to the i, e integral, psi bar, a slash psi, e of x, e1, p2. So that's what we're talking about. And let me just remind you um, that something like p1 is square root of 2 omega 1 AP1 dagger on the vacuum, where that's the relevant creation operator. I'm just reminding you what the normalization is. And the um, the plus for anti-commutation, minus for commutation relations are 2 pi q delta 1 minus 2. Okay. So, um, is that clear in my notation? Uh, not that I'm going to follow it consistently, but... Uh, Um, now, um, if we expand this, we see that S is going to be uh, I e squared over 2. Oh, let me just write 3, 4, T integral psi bar A slash psi at X, psi bar A slash psi at Y. This is the time ordered product. And then we have one, two here. Okay. Um, and if we write these as in terms of creation and annihilation operators, then this is basically a three, a four, time order product psi bar a slash psi x psi bar a slash psi y um, a one dagger a two dagger zero. And now we've got product square root of 2e for all four of the um, incoming and outgoing particles. Yes? Should it be obvious why the first order term vanishes? Why the first order term vanishes? Good question. Whoa! A little high there. Well, what we've got is we have to stop an electron and a photon and produce an electron and a photon in the final state. So that means we need four operators. And the, the single vertex in first order only has three operators. Psi bar A slash psi. So. Um, one of the things that is so nice about this particular uh, well, about QED, is that the formula here is so simple, psi bar a slash psi. I mean, you know, you can, it, it hardly, I mean, it's just so compact and simple. And um, on the other hand, that doesn't mean that I, that uh, the calculation of an amplitude to say, order alpha squared or alpha cubed or alpha to the fourth is going to be an easy matter, even though with psi bar a slash psi is pretty simple. Okay, now, um, the next step is to um, decide uh, what's going on here. In other words, uh, we're going to do first one amplitude and then the other. We're going to do S first 
then we have to decide, are particles one and two stopped at x or at y? Well, the way I wrote it, y is sitting right next to particles one and two, so I chose to have particles one and two stopped at y. Um, so what we get then is S sub S, meaning S channel. We cancel the factor of two by saying we're just going to have them stopped at y. Then we have minus e squared, zero, time order product. Whoops, all right, I left out and a three, a four, time ordered product, and then psi bar a slash psi at x. But now this field stops the electron, this field stops the photon, this one is left over. And so what we have is those, and then we have psi bar at y, and then now, well let me let me remind you what the fields are. Um, in particular, the electromagnetic field here is an integral dq p over 2 pi cubed, 1 over root 2 omega p, and omega p is just p, it's just the length of the p vector. Sum on polarizations, epsilon mu of p and sigma, a of p and sigma, e to the minus i px, plus the complex conjugate of this, or the permission conjugate of this, a dagger p sigma, e to the i px. Okay, so when this stops, it's the a that stops it, so we have an epsilon mu left over. So we'll have an epsilon mu, and it'll be epsilon mu one. So I'm just going to call it epsilon mu one. Um, e to the minus i p one. Whoops, I wrote x. It's really y, of course. Okay. Um, so that's the photon part, and then the electron part. Well, the electron field is psi of x equals integral dqp, of course, 2 pi q, 1 over root 2, let us say, ep, sum on spins, and then it's u of p and s, a of p and s, e to the minus i px, plus v of p and s, That's A, it doesn't look much like A, like this A. B dagger, if you want, P as E to the I, P X. We're not going to use the Bs, there aren't any positrons in this problem. And so, um, what's the A, of course, is A slash, so there's a gamma mu there. The psi stops the electron, and so we have a U. And that will be what? U2. Um, and it will be E to the minus I P2Y. And then we'll have the vacuum and then product square root of 2E. But the two E's are just E3 and E4. One and two are already um, dealt with. Okay. Um, so now um, the vertex X just creates uh, P4 and um, P3. And uh, how does that happen? Well, psi bar creates the electron and the A creates the photon. And so what we have is, um, I'm going to try to use as much forward as possible, minus E squared, zero, time-ordered product, and then we have it. And once again, I've forgotten to write d fourth x, d fourth y. So d fourth x, d fourth y, d fourth x, d fourth y. I don't know why I keep forgetting to write those things down. Anyway, um, we're uh, making the photon, so that's a dagger i, uh, P 
P4X, uh, and it would be um, the adjoint field here, so it would be uh, U bar uh, e to the I um, P3X. And so what we have here is e to the I P3X plus I P4X minus I P1Y minus I P two y um, and then we have an epsilon nu this is a uh, we're creating the photon so if we epsilon nu star of um, four and then there would be u bar of three and then there would be a gamma nu associated with that epsilon nu and what we have left here is uh, psi of x, uh, psi bar of y vacuum. And all the two e's are gone. Um, oh, I forgot. Hold on. Um, oh, the way I wrote this was a bit of a salad, actually. Um, but I can write the gamma mu epsilon mu of one. So we've had that, I hope, here. Yeah, there's epsilon mu of one, and um, there should be a u2. Okay. Oh, and of course, d fourth x, d fourth y. And all right, okay. And the time ordering refers to these two operators, psi of x, psi bar of y. So um, remember what the the um, propagator is for the um, fermion uh, for the a spin one half particle, or in particular an electron. It would be psi of x, psi bar of y is integral d fourth p 2 pi to the fourth i p slash plus m, that's a matrix of course, so p squared minus m squared plus i epsilon. And it's e to the i p, and it's y minus x, and um, This thing, if you want, is IJ. So this is the matrix here, uh, IJ, and this is delta IJ. Okay. Um, all right, so our, our S of S then, is minus e squared integral d4 of x, d4 of y, d4 of p over 2 pi to the fourth. So I'm putting in the, the spermion propagator. e to the ix, p3 plus p4 minus i y, p1 plus p2. Plus i p y minus x, and then we have epsilon nu four star u bar three m nu i p slash plus m m of u u two epsilon nu one over p squared minus m squared. I'm putting in the plus i epsilon, but that's really gilding the lily because um, uh, in tree level diagrams, uh, I mean, if you're not integrating over p, you don't need the i epsilon. Okay, so that's um, our amplitude, and now um, Dirac 
simplifies it for us. Uh, the integral over, let us say, uh, y tells us that p is p1 plus p2, and the integral over x tells us that, um, then we, it, so we get a delta function from the y integration that tells us p has to be p1 plus p2, and we get a 2 pi to the fourth that cancels that. Then, uh, if we do the x integration, we get 2 pi to the fourth times the delta function of energy momentum uh, conservation altogether. And so, altogether, then, pulling the i out from there, we get minus i e squared 2 pi to the fourth delta of sum of all momenta epsilon u star 4 u bar 3 gamma nu p1 slash plus p2 slash plus m gamma mu u2 epsilon mu 1 over p1 plus p2 squared minus m squared. Okay, so that's the amplitude um, for the S channel, which is to say this diagram um, which um, in which the P1 and P2 are stopped at one <coughs> vertex and P3 and P4 come out from the other vertex. So that's called the S channel. So any, any questions at this stage? Okay, well, the other amplitude is one in which um, the electron is stopped at one vertex and the photon at the other vertex. And um, so, once again, looking at this formula here, I chose to stop um, P1, the photon, at, um, at Y. And to make the... Uh, to make the... Um, all right, let me make sure um, I know what I'm doing here. That's easy, though. Yeah, but I wrote it, I wrote it wrong in my notes here. So, if we're stopping... We're stopping the photon at Y. And so we're really making P3 E there. I said P4 in my notes. But, in fact, in the formula that follows, I had it correct. So I guess I was, it's all right. All right, so what is ST then? ST then is going to be minus E squared, canceling the factor of 2 again, 0. And all we have is 8, 4 left because um, we're having uh, this vertex is y, and so we're producing the electron there, and that um, cancels the A3 here. Then we have a time order product integral, and just in case, I'll put in d fourth x, d fourth y right there at the beginning. Then we'll have psi bar a slash psi x, but now um, the at y, we're going to be making the electron, so there's going to be a u-bar electron here, and we're going to be stopping the photons. And so what that looks like then is u-bar 3, gamma mu, epsilon mu 1, e to the minus i y, p1 minus p3. And then we still have an A2 dagger 0 and the product of some of the leftover square root of 2e's. Okay, so now um, uh, wait a second, there's a little more left here. What we've got is we have a psi of y here because we didn't use the psi of y. And 
Okay, all right. So we've just done that verdict. Now, what has to happen here? Well, and maybe I should just mention something. I said we created the electron here at uh, Y. Well, that electron creation operator has to go through these two Fermi fields to couple with the A3 annihilation operator here. Two minus signs, but it doesn't make any difference because two minus signs cancel. Um, okay, now, um, I have, though, a minus sign in my notes here, and I'm a little puzzled as to where that Oh, okay. The next thing we have to do is we have to stop this electron, A2, at X. Well, in order to stop this electron at X, this creation operator has to pass this, this Fermi field before it gets to psi of X, so that is a minus sign. So then what we have is e squared 0 t integral d4 of x d4 of y. You see, I'm getting religion about these um, integration variables here. And then what we have left is psi bar x. And then we're going to make the photon at x also. So that's epsilon 4 star nu gamma nu. And then we've got a U1, and that U1 is the one that stopped U2. except now we have a psi y and then a psi bar of x. So let me not write that whole thing down. I'll just write you what the, uh, the amplitude is then. st then is equal to minus e squared epsilon mu star 4 epsilon mu 1 integral d4 of x, d4 of y, and we're going to have a d4 of p now over 2 pi to the 4 because we have a time ordered mean value of the vacuum of um, psi of y, psi bar of x. And so this, uh, the rest of this then is the phase factor e to the i of x, p4 minus p2 plus i y, p3 minus p1. Um, 
plus IP and it's well, X minus Y in this case because you see um, the sidebar has the X in it and the thing that that comes in with the plus sign is the argument of